Hi, I'm Raphael de Groot. I have come up with the title of this talk, which is untitled Lived Experience Number 8395, <laughs> thinking about the silent unease we can often feel when walking through a contemporary art exhibition. A kind of lack of words, and because of that, so it seems, a sensation of blankness. Everyone has a different reaction to that uncomfortable sensation. Some might fear it and dislike it. Others search for it. It is precisely this state of not being able to name and grasp what I'm looking at that got me in the visual arts. My artwork would most probably leave you asking, what in the world is this? <clears throat> when this question pops up, most of the time, I still find myself without words or with too much words that somehow still don't really say what that work I have done is. Now, my goal is not to make, to do, sorry, an incomprehensible work. And don't misunderstand me. It's not because we, including myself, don't get it, that it makes it art. I mean, there are many things in this world that leave us in the blank that are not art. Although one can indeed understand things through art, I just don't think that making art or looking at it has to do with comprehending, that is, with getting it. Again here, some people could dismiss art because of that, while others will say, how liberating. <clears throat> it's good to flip things around Log the comprehension reflex. There is no message, guys. Art is not about something. Art is. Art surges. You can think of it as having a life of its own. But how to approach this? A manual of instructions is superfluous here. You are free, really, to come up with your own way. Art, in this sense, is an, is an invitation to experience, feel, and think, taking a distance from a normative pattern. It's a break from the grid. <laughs> hmm. A sensation of void, kicks right back in, but maybe in a slightly different way, stimulated and opened up, I hope, by a desire of emancipation. Our Western culture is so materialistically covetous, performance-oriented, and dominated by the sense of sight that it can be difficult to think of art, particularly the visual arts, in another way as a process rather than as an object existing before us that we can possess or master through our gaze and thought. So, if we want to consider a reverse side, then, when looking at an artwork, we have to think that maybe the art is actually what we don't see. The image of an iceberg comes to mind. It's a commonplace, but I don't mind. I, I find it useful. Let's say the tip of the iceberg is an artwork we're looking at. This means it continues beyond what we can see. Typically, 90% of the volume of an iceberg is underwater. The visible portion at the surface is only a small manifestation of it, and it is difficult to judge from that visible portion what is the shape of the underwater part. I like to think here that art corresponds to that underwater part, and the tip at the surface is just the work. So the underwater art portion, you can't see it, but it's very real and there, overwhelming, one could even say threatening. Now icebergs are large pieces of freshwater ice that have broken off a glacier or an ice shelf. They float freely in open water, traveling and drifting with ocean currents sometimes smashing up against the shore or getting caught in shallow waters, leaving imprints in the seabed. Apparently, oceanographers 
follow them because the cold, fresh water they contribute to the sea can influence currents and ocean circulation far away from their origins. As they melt, they leak nutrients. The water surrounding them abounds with plankton, fish, and other sea life. Compressed air bubbles are trapped in snow layers very early in the history of the ice, and this air, from a very distant past, makes a fizzing sound at the surface when, liberate, <coughs> when liberated during the melt. This metaphor, to me, suggests that, the, that iced fresh water is a kind of materialization of human experience, of invisible, intangible aspects we retain from life. Now, I don't know whether, whether this makes further sense, but the fact that forces, Archimedes, uh, gravity, densities, and so forth, so forth act upon this huge piece of ice and get it to show its tip, implies that art is an impulse to make perceptible, present to us, things that otherwise would not be, that otherwise we just couldn't, could not grasp. This displacement is what the artist, an ordinary ocean inhabitant, works at. While doing this, diving into this other reality, she or he remains unable to say what it is that is working its way to the surface of the ocean. <laughs>